Yo, what is up, everybody, and welcome back to, to the Sooner Surge. And guys, Oklahoma got to what some people would consider the national player of the year in Lauren Cagle and scored, what was it, eight runs off of her, I believe? Yeah. And really, we saw it off from Oklahoma. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, we showed the ability to maintain balance, whether that was through contact or through power. But guys, defensively, first thing that needs to be talked about, the unchar uncharacteristic errors. So, Braden, we'll start with you. Give your thoughts on those. Now, that just, that just shocked me out of nowhere. That just shocked me. It's routine I mean, plays. Right, Jay? Yeah, I mean, yeah, but here's the thing. They've been good for so long this year. And first game of the Super Regional. And I, I, it can happen, guys. It, to me, the most important thing was, and, and I think this is going to be a big deal, is that game was 4 nothing, right? You know, they had some runners on early in the game. They got through it. Ball got through it. And then when it was 4-2, and I believe they had second and third steal, or yeah. maybe base low, either one. And the base got, got, in one out. Got, got out of that jam, guys. And then when the OU came up to bat, to put five on the board and just end the game like that, 9-2, to me that tells me more about this team than the few errors. Because – I agree. This team, the pressure, it kind of tightened up. You make a few mistakes. And I wouldn't even call, you know, the one up the middle with Lyons and T.R.E. Jennings wasn't an error. They just kind of miscommunicated. On who, it could have been a double play. They kind of miscommunicated yeah. the ball. And there, and there's also a play where it, where Lyons kind of took a misstep to the right for just yeah. a second. And it was able to get under her glove, which also the ball didn't – took an uncharacteristic bounce. So that also plays yeah, a Yeah, and to me, it says more about this team, the way they responded in that inning, that half inning, when they came up to bat and just the huge hits. I mean, the home run by – the grand slam by Lee. I mean, and she had hit one, I believe, first at bat to the warning track off Cagle. Uh, you know, uh, and so, man, just a great way to respond. Put this team, you know, out, go up 9 2 and just end the game right there. And, you know, Starocco comes in, closes it out without allowing a hit. And, you know, hey, overall, it's a victory. You got that one under your belt. Now you can probably go with May, I'm guessing, tomorrow and try to close out this series. Because uh, you definitely – the first game is so big in these series, guys. I can't tell you how big they are to to have the first game under your belt and a victory, not having to win two in a row. I mean, obviously, I expect OU to close it out tomorrow with May. Hey, but Jim, this, Clemson's Jim, team, this Clemson team can hit. Yeah. yeah. Um, what I was going to say, what saved OU on defense was Jada Coleman. Yeah, that first play she made, that was a that was a tough play. That was almost like a miscommunication, too. It didn't look like – You're playing her and a Riley Boone. Yeah, but she yeah. made the play, and it was a good play to get it started because that would have been at least a double, maybe three-bagger. Who knows on that? Probably a double. But, hey, ball overall, you know, I thought – I mean, I had to look. I, I was in and out with work as far as watching every pitch, but uh, her control seemed good. I, I don't know – did she walk? Yeah. Uh, how were her walks? I mean, her control. Mm -hmm. I good. think she only walked like one or two batters. One or, yeah, one yeah or I mean, they got some hits on her and they got some base runners. But uh, well, and and the thing is, was that Jordy Ball today? I noticed that Clemson, their offensive approach was swinging late in counts, and Jordy Ball she likes to normally get a, get ahead in counts. So I thought that was affecting her some because she was too thinking about well, if I get to two strikes. And if I show them my, my drop ball, the fastball, the rise ball, that they're going to, you know, they've already seen it once. So she was kind of getting behind in counts at points, too. But Jordy Ball, she was, she was able to respond several times. Mm -hmm. where, where she struggled and she was able to get out of, once again, the but, bases loaded jam. And I think she, only the only one of the runs were on her. The other one was – Yeah, it was one, one, one earned run, one unearned. But – to me, the way she got out of that inning, you know, you're, that game, I, I can just imagine, you know, you're up 4 nothing, then it's 4-2, one of them's an unearned run. You know, it, it's getting tight there pressure-wise as a pitcher, especially with them two runners on and the bases loaded. And for her to respond and get out of that, it's, it's big time. It's a big time player does that, all right? A, a not big time player allows more than that. And, I mean, uh, so, I mean, it's a victory. It's a win. It's a 9-2. I mean, it's crazy that they won 9-2 because that game did not seem like it was that, you know, far of a gap. It was that one inning, though, you just blew it open there. Yeah. So, but, 
Jay. Yeah. I was glad Brito got that home run, though, after making those errors. Yeah, she had the air, and that was big for her to get a home run. I mean, they had two that inning with her and Lee. I think Sanders was inning before or something like that. <laughs> Cindy yep. Sanders, again, another bomb, okay? Mm-hmm. She's playing well. She's hitting the That ball name well, so. comes up a lot as of late. Sydney Sanders, it's been a reoccurring theme. But Jackson, Jackson, mm-hmm. but I, what I was happy is about that Gasso went to the circle and talked to the infield, you know? Well, and also, I have something to say about that, too. I believe Jordy Ball, she was rolling at a point in the game. And Gasso, out of nowhere, went went out there to talk to her. And that kind of threw Jordy Ball off of her. Yeah. And, Braden, I know that I said that on the phone to you as well. And it was like, I know that Gasso knows what she's doing. And I'm not saying that she was in, in the wrong, but I don't know – if maybe they tried to switch up Jordy Ball's approach and that could have affected the way. Yeah, there's there's was, no tell. And obviously that doesn't make a difference. Grasso knows exactly what she's doing. Yeah. It could have been anything as far as maybe uh, some pitches she's wanting her to, you know, for place. I, who knows what it was about, guys. I, uh, so, so I mean, yeah. I mean, I can't question anything Grasso does. That would be the most dumb thing I ever. I mean, Grasso's the yeah. – she is the queen. I mean, let's be honest, queen of softball coaching. So now, obviously, I, I think we all in agreement that May is going to go tomorrow night. Yeah, like tomorrow. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and hey, Clinton yeah. going in was a hot team. They are a hot team. Their bats, they had some runners. They're a hot team. They, I mean, this is you just got to every you know from here on out, basically. Yeah, I know we've all think they're going to win the whole thing, and I but every game you know you're going to have these situations where the game can get tight. And it's how you respond. It's how you respond. And we saw how they responded today. Yeah, go ahead, Brad. But, you know, after those Gasso talked to the infield, and then when we got to bat, we started hitting home runs. Yeah. Yeah, that's part of it, too. Yeah, hey, another thing is, I think we all, and probably most OU fans who have watched this team is, we've even said it before. And I've said, I, you know, early on, or later on in the season, I thought they might lose a game and stumble, right? But the only way this team is going to lose, and especially if they ever were going to lose two out of three, they're going to have to do what happened. They're going to have to have some mistakes by them. By them. They're going to have to beat themselves in a lot of these games because uh, they're just too good. I mean, their bats are too good. Their pitching's too good. They're going to – and here's what happened today. When they did have the arrows, they got out of it. Now – you could have a game situation where you have a few errors and you don't get out of the inning, and that that could have happened today, and they could have been four yeah. four, or and it could have been a whole different game. So you can't do that. You can't have those errors, but it's out of their system now, that, you know. And let's let's move on and, and close it out tomorrow. Yeah, and just like you said, the errors and weather, and it's just like big time players make big time plays, and we saw it from Jordy Ball. She's a big time player. She was able to get out of that jam and save. And really not make the errors look as crucial to the game. Well, how many – I don't have the box store in front of me, and I didn't watch every pitch, but how many errors were considered errors? Because some of them were just communication. I wouldn't even consider them an error. I think think there was three. Were there three – were there really three counted errors? I know that there was two counted errors for sure. Burrito, burrito. I can look it up real quick. Hang on. Well, yeah, and Jason Braden – I thought that Lauren Cagle today, honestly, she not, not she bad. has some nice stuff on the mound. And now I don't think – just like I know that we've said this multiple times, no matter who you put on the mound play against OU, mm-hmm. OU is going to make them look like not as good as they actually are because OU is unfair to play against. Yeah. And hey, really, Lauren Cagle, how many? Two. It was Brito and Riley Boone on the throwing air. Oh yeah! So really, I mean, it, it, I mean, I think the other plays were just like, like the Tra Jennings, the Lions was just. Mm-hmm. I mean, who knows if they make that double play or make the play? But it was just kind of like uncharacteristic, maybe you could say. I don't know, but yeah. Hey, and it's a victory. Like baby. I was saying, yeah, it's a victory. Nine two. Yeah. yeah, Jason, out of the game, you got to watch. Uh, where would you rank Lauren Cagle among the players OU's played against this year? You know, it's so hard to tell with this OU team because 
Jackson. Yeah. I think she's number four. Who would you put her head over? Hmm. Kelly Maxwell. Who else? For for you me, have her at, wait, would say that Brandon has her at four. So who else would you put ahead of her? Montana Fouts. Did they pitch? Did they play against Fouts? I thought I thought they didn't play against her this year. Not this. Year. I'm no, talking, I'm talking about this year. This Who's year, going? outside of the Baylor pitcher, mm. I would say she. Oh, Texas. I would say her and Cagle. This girl. No. Hey guys. She's she's most a lot of people consider this girl national player of the year. She's probably the best pitcher they faced. Let's just be honest. Probably they they oh you had a oh you hit some bombs today and they hit some to the warning track. Here's the thing: it's hard to rate pitchers against OU. They're just so good offensively. Yeah, I mean they could be they could be really good, and then OU just comes out and just. But I mean, we and we like like Jeremy's talked about it quite a bit on this uh, softball bros here is. When OU gets to the lineup a second or third time, that's when a lot of times they do their damage. I know a lot of times they've started off high, but still, they they that second or third at bat and they've seen you. I mean, you know what happens. So, but, hey, it's a nine-two victory, man. Who cannot they, be happy about that? Me. Oh, they come did. on, Braden. Did. A seven-run differential in a super regional. Yeah. Where, the, where the 16 best teams are left in college softball. And, and Clemson, Clemson's been a hot team, guys. Yeah, don't. Clemson is one of the better teams OU's faced all year. I will give them that. I will fly down here and say that. I, I don't know about that. I mean, they're a good team. I think they're probably between OSU and Texas. I think they're below them. But Yeah. And it's like we said, man, OU, it seems like every week they find a new way to win, and I don't know how it's possible because it seems like we've ran out of outcomes at this point. But it truly has just been an impressive feat. And, Braden, what were you going to say? Uh, you know who played really good? I mean, defense-wise? Who? Hanson. Kenzie Hanson. Yeah, Hanson. She, that, that, she had that nice catch behind the plate. Yeah. And speaking of, and just like really, Braden, just like you said, the amount of energy plays, even whenever it seems like it's dead, there's someone on OU that makes that oh, yeah. Yeah. energy play and brings it back to life. And uh, and guys, Jason, I don't know if you have any more thoughts to give. No, I think we got. I think I covered everything. I and I just ready for tomorrow and close well, this thing out. Here, hang on. I have something. What for? Sydney Sanders played really well. Yeah, I mean another home run. I mean, what can you? I mean, what can you say? Uh, I mean, she's been good as of late. I mean, she really has down the stretch yeah. of the season. But Jay, I didn't know if you heard this because you were cut off. That I said, uh, Kinsey Hansen played good defense. She she always does. Ken, Kinsey yeah, Hansen. Kinsey Hansen's a good catcher. I mean, she's just really solid. I mean, yeah. And speaking of just like this whole team as a whole, if you guys haven't, go check out SearchSportsNetwork.com. I just released an article not too long, not too long ago, and say like an hour ago it dropped over OU's victory over Clemson. Go check it out. Uh, follow our social medias, like and subscribe and comment. And guys, tomorrow we're gonna have another exciting day of some softball. Boomer, boomer, boomer.